uh, aid of, or at Digital Entertainment World earlier this year talking about their Crikey platform. So I'd like to introduce uh, Kentucky as well as John V. Sriram uh, of Crikey. Thank you so much for the introduction. In today's talk, we'll be discussing how to leverage the power of context in your mobile AR game. For an overview, we'll start with what is mobile augmented reality? We'll talk a lot about Unity's tools, AR Foundation and Mars. We'll discuss presence, context and immersion theory, and then practical applications in gaming. To start, we'll introduce ourselves. My name is John B and I'm the CEO of Crikey. I did my BA and MBA at Stanford and previously worked at YouTube. Hey, I'm Kedeke. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Crikey. I received my BA, MA, and PhD from the Stanford Virtual Human Interaction Lab. And here at Crikey, I manage all things engineering, product, and design. And what is Crikey? We're a mobile augmented reality gaming app where create meets play. We build all of our AR games from start to finish, everything from the texture of the leaves to the animation and game design. We enable users to create gameplay highlight reel videos, which they can post to our platform or elsewhere. And all of our games are location-based, built on top of Google Maps. Our app is available for free on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And you can scan that QR code on the bottom right to download the app now. We use Unity to build all of our games. In camera, we use AR Foundation and Mars for live computer vision. All of our games are built on top of the Unity Maps SDK for Google Maps, so they are location-based AR games. And Unity controls our entire video pipeline, video recording and editing cross-platform on mobile. We use AR Foundation, which brings together the best of AR Kit and AR Core and is a tool provided by Unity. It covers plane detection, camera translation, and Mars, which my sister will talk about now. So what is Mars? Mars is a new tool from Unity that provides mobile optimized computer vision features for developers. Using raw point cloud data, we can develop custom contextual computer vision applications. Also, Mars allows us to do end-to-end -end testing directly in the simulation view inside the Unity editor, which means we don't have to make builds all the time to test AR games. And finally, it allows multiple applications in mobile AR gaming, which we'll cover later on in this talk. And now we'll show a short trailer of one of our mobile augmented reality games. So a little bit about social presence and why this is relevant to building mobile AR games. First up, avatars. When you build characters that have realistic behaviors, this can generate compelling social interactions for users and enhance the gameplay. Secondly, context. Using new tools like Mars, we can build realistic character interaction with real world camera features. This allows users to feel like the line between what is virtual and what is real has been blurred for a better experience. Finally, here at Crikey, we quantify these types of features by measuring social presence with motion data and biometrics. And a little bit more about camera translation and why this feature is critical to building compelling XR experiences. First up, responsiveness. Camera translation allows users to show, to feel that AR objects are getting larger as they get closer, meaning that the scene is responsive to them. Second, 360 visibility. Users can approach and view augmented reality objects from any angle as though they're actually grounded in the physical world. And finally, in practice, we at Crikey encourage our users to approach virtual habitats in our interactive wingspan game. In the GIF at right, you can see a user approaching the Frugonus Hawk and the bird gets larger and closer as the user approaches it. And a little bit more about Mars and why it's so unique. For the first time, Mars allows developers to access raw point cloud data, enabling multiple types of contextual computer vision applications. We can access these applications by detecting and clustering 3D points. By finding the largest clusters, we can actually differ differentiate different planes in the same camera view. Finally, we're actually able to save these multiple planes and point cloud data per session, meaning that users can play for an infinite period of time with contextual features. For example, in the GIF at right, we've detected multiple horizontal and vertical planes. Because we know the exact X, Y, and Z depth differences between these planes, we can enable custom user interactions to enhance gameplay. 
What you can see here is this exact feature in practice. Because we know the location of multiple planes, we can actually have users draw bridges that, the, that are the exact height between the planes and have our character traverse them, making for interesting gameplay. Additionally, gameplay is different every time the user opens the camera based on what physical world features are in their room. And finally, Mars is important because it allows us to customize AR experiences and build upon the key psychology of augmented reality interactions. It does this with social presence, enabling realistic augmented reality experiences, immersion, blurring the line between what is virtual and what is real, and the media equation, which suggests that the more realistic media experiences feel, whether VR, AR, or traditional media, the more likely they are to have a high impact on user behavior. We'll now talk a little bit about our implementation of the Mars Toolkit. First up, an overview of how we built this. It all starts with the creative process, building concept art, a game narrative, 3D models, and optimizing them for mobile. Next up, we'll talk about how we tested our assets and game mechanics in the Mars editor. Then we'll discuss how we play tested the beta version of the game, ensuring that Mars could work in multiple real world conditions. And finally, we'll talk about the path to polishing and publishing our game. It all starts with the creative process. We like to begin with story and character and find a narrative and visual assets and design that will work well for our users. What you can see here is concept art from one of our upcoming games. Next up, testing our assets. Once we've built our story, narrative, and all of our 3D assets, we test them inside of Mars. As I mentioned earlier, Mars allows us to test AR experiences directly in the editor in two ways. The first is with surfaces. In the GIF at left, you can see us inside the simulation view in Mars, which is a sample bedroom. We can see what will happen when we detect multiple surfaces in this room and try to spawn objects upon it. This enables us to test the game at a very simple level without ever having to make a build. If we want to test more complex game mechanic, we can use a Mars feature called conditions. This allows us to see how objects might function in real world situations. For example, in the GIF at right, we've detected multiple surfaces inside of the simulation view in Mars. Now that there are multiple planes, we can actually see what might happen if a user draws a bridge uh, between one plane and the other. In this case, we'd like to trigger enemy behavior, which we can play test directly inside of the editor. And now on to playtesting the beta version. Thanks to the new and editor features of Mars, by the time we arrived at playtesting, a lot of the preliminary bugs had already been worked out because we could test them inside the editor. We now needed to see how our users would respond when they actually had the ability to draw bridges between physical world objects, something that's never been possible in mobile augmented reality before. What you can see here is that we're detecting uh, clusters in the point cloud, spawning objects on top of them, saving every point cloud position in a given session, and then allowing users to use this data to drive gameplay mechanics. And finally, polish to publish. Once we finalized the UI and UX for the game and used Mars to make sure that all our conditions work correctly, we can optimize the assets for mobile and publish the app. What you can see in the GIF at right is that users are now able to draw realistic bridges between multiple physical world objects in real time during gameplay. And now we'll talk a bit about the practical applications in gaming. And we'll start with one of our games that is currently published, Wingspan. And how did we find this game? We read a New York Times article about a year ago about a board game started by a female board game creator and ornithologist. We were so inspired, we reached out to her and she sent us a free copy of the game. We played it over the weekend and absolutely loved it. We thought this would be so beautiful in augmented reality and we reached out to the National Audubon Society who agreed to sponsor the game. And why now? We believe immersive experiences can inspire empathy and drive real world behavior change to protect the environment. Our goal as a company is to promote the awareness of birds in the environment through gaming. And this all stems from my sister's PhD research at Stanford, which I'll have her speak a bit about now. Existing research indicates that limited periods of immersion in virtual reality can actually increase empathy and connection to conservation-based behaviors and attitudes. When you take this and apply it to mobile AR, the possibilities are endless. Today, no research or applications exist except for Crikey in terms of exploring the connection between mobile AR immersion and conservation-based attitudes and behaviors. With Wingspan, our goal is to bring birds directly into people's living rooms to test this theory. If somebody spends time in virtual environments every single day, will they feel a stronger connection to conservation and hopefully take action? And what is the game? In Wingspan AR, you play as an ornithologist with the goal of protecting and collecting birds in different ecosystems. Because our game is location-based, when you open it up and you see a map of your neighborhood, you can walk to any street corner to unlock a different ecosystem and bird species. 
You can discover birds and food tokens on the map. And in our current situation, you can teleport those into your home to play <coughs> inside at home. And I'll just repeat that. In our current situation, you can teleport to play inside at home. You can collect different birds on different days for specific badges to display on your profile. And we have daily challenges where you can compete to be top birder in our in-app leaderboard. The first birds we created were a small group of birds that we chose to launch with. We add more every month. We build texture and animate 3D models of every bird. And these are all inspired by the watercolor drawings from the board game cards. The species that we started with or from left are the Eastern Screech Owl, Owl the Cerulean Warbler, American Robin, the Scissor-Tailed Flycatcher, which features on the cover of the board game box, the Red-Tailed Hawk, Anna's Hummingbird, Mallard Duck, and the Common Yellowthroat. We have a task of creating more than 170 digital birds for this game. And how do we do this? We start by creating a template by species category. Seeing the, the birds in the previous slide, once we have one hummingbird, it becomes easier to create the second hummingbird and so on. We can adjust slightly for individual species based on shape of beaks, wings, bodies, years, and wings. Our 3D modeling and art team researched each bird species, noting specific shapes, textures, and behaviors, for example, how a wing folds before starting the 3D modeling process. We have a core set of animations for every single bird, so walking, flying, slow motion flying, eating berries or worms, and then we add species specific ones like a turkey gobble. We, our goal is to retain free agency for wild animals even in augmented reality. So when you load our game, you're in camera, the bird is in your living room, it will not come up to you to eat out of your hand. It's going to fly around as it would in the natural world. And our hope is that as a digital ornithologist, you will be able to observe animals as if they were in their own habitat in your living room. Our animation team also researched specific behavior patterns of different species, how they preen or chirp or walk before beginning to animate them. This is an example of the Anna's hummingbird. On the left is the watercolor image from the original board game. And on the right is the 3D model of the Anna's Hummingbird in our Wingspan AR game on the Crikey app. We actually hand paint every feather in, on this bird and every one of our birds in app as well. So let's go digital birding together. So the first step is to download the app. You can find our app on the Google Play or the Apple App Store by searching Crikey, K-R-I-K-E-Y, or you can also scan the QR code on this slide. What you'll see when you come to our App Store page is the image on the right. For the best AR experience, we recommend stand up and have your phone up and have a little bit of free space on the floor so you can walk forward or kneel to get closer to the bird. As Kenneke mentioned earlier, this is a core feature of augmented reality called camera translation, which allows you to move in the physical world and in the digital world at the same time. So to start, you can tap the Wingspan game icon once you launch the app. And this is a GIF that just shows you where that is. So you open up the app and you tap that wingspan game tile on your screen. That should load the app and load a bird in augmented reality. So you can start to engage with the digital environment. You can walk around the trees. You can get closer to the bird. We encourage you to listen to the sounds of the environment, follow the bird, observe it. And when you're ready, you can toss the food tokens on the bottom of the screen up to the bird by swiping up on them. You can log in to discover more birds by tapping the pink login button on the game tile screen. And once you're into the app, this is a sample of what you'll see. On the far left, you'll see a maps view, which shows a map of your neighborhood uh, built on top of Google Maps. There will be different pin drops on the map that you can tap to see what bird species is in that ecosystem. In this case, we've tapped the water ecosystem and can see a rosette spoonbill. We can also see how many food tokens are required to collect that bird. Once you have collected a bird, they appear in your Explorer journal, and you can tap the little white icons on the bottom of your collected bird tiles to see a fact card about each bird. On the third to the right screen is a screenshot of the different badges that you can earn in app, and this is a sample of those badges. And on the far right is our leaderboard. And as you can see, there are quite a few people that are reaching the 100 bird discovery mark. And there is a daily challenge winner board as well. And you can see the top birds collected that week. We hope you enjoy playing. Uh, if you decide to share your video to social media, please tag us at Crikey App on Instagram. You can also follow us there to see what are the latest bird species we are posting in app, as well as the new upcoming game, which we shared today in the presentation. 
In conclusion, AR Foundation enables us to publish cross-platform. Mars empowers developers to bring context to AR games. Both of these Unity tools are absolutely critical to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Most important are story, character, and context, which are key throughout the entire creative process. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Crikey is available for free to download on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, and you can also scan this QR code for ease of access to the app. Thank you so much again for taking the time to listen to our talk, and we are now open for questions. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. What a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having us. us. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I, I got to see a little bit about this at uh, Digital Entertainment World earlier this year, and I've, uh, I, I just love, I love what you're building. I'm curious what your thoughts on in regards to uh, multiplayer with these, these, type of, uh, these type of experiences. How do, how do these experiences scale to, uh, to more than just a single player experience? Yeah, great question. I think there's uh, huge opportunities for multiplayer, especially with location-based games, um, time-sensitive events. So at a specific location, specific time, uh, we think can have high engagement. Obviously, with with COVID right now, um, that may not be possible. But we do hope that when all this passes, we could add that feature into the app. That's amazing, and it, it seems it seems like these tools provided provided by Unity really make this this process a lot easier. You know, um, and, and any kind of gotchas or uh, any sort of experiences like that that you got while building this while building this uh, experience. Yeah, I think we feel very positively about both AR Foundation and Mars. They truly allow anybody to build uh, high quality mobile AR experiences and you don't have to be a computer vision expert uh, to do that. Uh, all the tools are given to you and they're very easy to set up and use and actually to customize as well. And uh, we think that's really important for the ecosystem so that lots of people can put great content out there. And beyond the tools, the Unity team is extremely responsive and supportive of developers in the community. And we really, really appreciate that and are grateful to have had the opportunity to work with them on this tool early on. Well, fantastic. I look forward to the, the continuation of this game and what, uh, what comes next from your, from your team. Uh, we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, thank, thank you again. Thank you again for joining us. We're going to keep moving forward just to keep things on track today. We've got a packed day. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Thanks.